Dawn Trail has been out for about a week now, so I feel like I can finally come up for air and become a contributing member of society again. I wanted to talk a little bit about my first impressions of the expansion, so I went and found a nice little quiet corner of Tuliola so that we could just have a little chat. For this video, I've decided not to include any gameplay footage, mostly because a couple of reasons. It's just easier on me from an editing perspective. Two, it guarantees that there are no spoilers in this video. It's not even accidental. And three, it frees you up to multitask, do something else while you listen into this. So consider this something of a podcast. So far as the MSQ discussion is concerned, I'm not going to be talking about anything in specifics at all. Um, I do want to speak to a couple of elements from the initial plot that I felt didn't work or, or maybe could have been improved um, and things about that initial plot that I also liked. Um, but even that, I'm going to be speaking very vaguely. One thing I will say, I'm not going to be spoiler policing the comments crazy, crazy hard. So if you have not finished the MSQ, I would not recommend scrolling down to read and engage in the comment section. Um, but yeah, this video is going to be very spoiler free and I'm not going to talk about the back half of the MSQ pretty much at all. So without that, I feel like we can go ahead and get into it. I feel that the story of Dawn Trail was honestly very, very good. However, I would say that the storytelling was maybe not as good and could have used a little bit of work. For one, the main story of Dawn Trail outside of the dungeons and the trials that you would expect to have doesn't have a ton of quote unquote gameplay. Now, I'm not somebody who thinks that gameplay needs to be combat all of the time, but even outside of going and killing a couple of mobs, there really aren't that many instances where you're doing a challenge, a puzzle, or really anything of the sort. Most of the expansion, I'm going to say about 85% of this main story quest, is going to be walking around and talking to various different characters. So, before the onset of Dawn Trail, I would highly recommend that you go fix a cup of coffee, grab a snack, get comfortable, because you're going to be doing a lot of reading. I don't think that's a bad thing, but it is something worth pointing out. Now, you've learned through the patch content that Wuklamot has come to seek aid in the right of secession. Basically, she wants to become the Dawn Servant to the Yolal, and she needs your help in passing this right of secession and basically proving to her father that she's worthy of becoming the Dawn Servant. I'm operating under the assumption that that is not a spoiler because it was in the patch content, and so I am going to be speaking about that right of secession a little bit. In this right of secession, you and Wuklamat and the rest of your party are traveling to various different regions to interact with the cultures and the different people that inhabit Tuliolal to understand more about their culture, what some of their needs are, and to ultimately prove to each of them that Wuklamat is worthy of being their ruler. To this end, I'll say that I didn't find many of the societies that inhabit Tuliolal to be particularly interesting. For one, they're kind of iterations upon various different creatures that we've interacted with already, and the cultures that they have and the needs that they have don't feel like they are particularly unique to this region. They feel like cultures and problems that could have arisen wherever they were, anywhere in the world, really. So it felt like a missed opportunity to further elaborate on some of the unique qualities that this region has. So I've interacted with goblins back on my home continent. I've interacted with goblins when I went to the first, and now I'm interacting with goblins over here. And they are different, but they're not so significantly different as to make them interesting and engaging to me for the third time. There were also a couple of instances I could think of where a character's motivations didn't feel like it had been significantly foreshadowed and sort of sprung up on me and almost didn't feel believable in a way because it, it just kind of felt like it came out of nowhere and one particular instance where they tried to elicit sympathy out of me and i just wasn't there for them emotionally at all so uh, all in all i feel like some of those elements were a little bit weak in that first half and in the first couple of days i found myself needing to take a few more breaks and actually go do other things and whatnot just to you know basically refresh myself and make sure that I was paying attention the bulk of the time. But towards that back half, as you get deeper into the expansion, I feel like, you know, I was much more engaged and pushing and wanting to get to the end and yeah, just having a lot more fun. Every expansion has its own sort of narrative through line where it's trying to have a conversation about a specific topic with the player. And I feel like the through line of this expansion was not something that I really expected at all. And I thought it was something that was handled very well. So 
All in all, I'm really happy with the main story that we got here, though I do wish that maybe there was a little bit more gameplay and interactivity at times, and I do wish that maybe some of the initial MSQ had better highlighted some of the unique qualities of this new region that we're in. Next, I wanna talk about dungeon design because I feel like they really knocked it out of the park this time. I really like the new dungeon design. Pretty much every party that I've been in has been in agreement that the dungeons in this expansion feel significantly harder than the dungeons of the previous expansion. And I think that that's a really good thing. While the dungeons are considered like the lowest form of, con of instance content, that a player is expected to participate in. I do, like dungeons are still something that you're going to have to engage with at the end game anyway, because you're gonna have to farm them for tombstones, right? For some of your end game gear. And when the dungeons are really, really easy to get through, I find myself sort of sliding off of them. I'm like watching something else on my other monitor while I'm doing it, I'm not engaged and I, it just becomes a chore that I have to do. It's time consuming and it's not interesting at all, right? Whereas now with this expansion, I've done some of these dungeons three, four times and I find myself improving at the different mechanics that the bosses have each time. And that has been a change of pace that is really refreshing and really rewarding for me. Some people I've noticed in the different groups I've been in have been getting frustrated at the fact that they're significantly harder, but it is my my opinion that it is a good and necessary change overall. I've noticed that they're also experimenting and getting a little bit more creative with the trap trash mob sections of the dungeons. So prior to this, they had gotten into a really solid flow of like, you're in this section, there are two camps of like three monsters, you pull them all together, you AOE them down, then you go to the next one. It's gonna be the same thing, you do that again, and then there's a boss fight. After that boss fight, there's two camps of three mobs, you pull them all together, you AOE them down, yada yada yada, right? It was very predictable, very formulaic, and frankly, it, it worked all right for, you know, a trash mob section. Here, they have gotten a little bit more flexible with like, how many different mobs are in each group? Are you able to pull through and get all the different mobs together? Sometimes they put like one single monster that is like sort of a, calling them a mini boss wouldn't be fair for reasons that I'll get into. But it, in general, they're just getting more experimental with like how many different mobs are you fighting? And you know, what are the mechanics that they have? I think this is a positive thing because speaking to the jobs that I have, I've always found that my single target rotations are far more engaging than my AOE rotations. And the fact that the trash mobs were very predictable and very formulaic meant, again, that when I was going through dungeons previously, it was very mind numbing. I go through, I do my one, two, three AOE rotation, and then we just move through. There just really wasn't anything to think about. Now, because the size of the trash packs are changing, what would be optimal in terms of damage output is also changing. And it's keeping me a little bit more engaged in what's going on. And again, I think that that's a positive thing. One thing I'll note, however, is that I don't think the quote unquote mini bosses that sometimes exist right before a, a traditional boss are very compelling. Really all it is is one very large mob and he does an attack that like a normal trash mob would make. I feel like that's a bit of a missed opportunity. If you're going to put like one really big mob in front of a dungeon, maybe you could do something where like the trash mob teaches you a mechanic and it doesn't feel like a boss. Like I don't think it should be difficult or take forever, but he might teach you like one little mechanic and then the boss that you fight right after it also does that mechanic, but with a little twist. It's able to play with your expectations because it just set up an expectation right before it. That I feel like would have been a better use of that kind of, you know, mob rather than just being like, here's one mob that has more health and then he does a big ol' attack, you know? I, I feel like that would have been a more creative way to do that. Next, I kind of wanted to talk about the major cities. As you know, if you've played any expansion at this point, each expansion has two major cities, one that you're introduced to pretty much immediately, and the second you're introduced to at some point in the MSQ. The first major city in this expansion is Tuliolo, and I really, really like Tuliolo. I think you know, it feels very lived in, it feels very real. The city like layout feels very believable. Uh, I enjoy walking through all of the different vending stalls and the, the sort of hustle and bustle of the city. And I like listening to like the upbeat jazz music while I'm doing my market board shenanigans. So I really like Tuliolo, I think it's, it's great. The second city I think is also very inspired and I like it quite a bit, but I do have a couple of gripes with it. 
If you've gotten to that portion of the MSQ, you'll know that there's a portion of that city where a lot of the MSQ takes place, and there's a portion of that city that's sort of set to the side and reserved for a lot of the in-game vendors, like the tombstone vendors and stuff like that, that you're gonna, you're gonna need later on. The MSQ portion of the city, I think, looks phenomenal. I think it's great, and it's the portion of the city that they end up using in a lot of the promotional materials and in the loading screen and, and all of that sort of stuff. The part of the city that you're gonna spend most of your in-game time in, however, I think, is incredibly boring. It's kind of just a big open room and it's it just feels like it was a little bit rushed to be honest with you. Compounding that is the fact that I think the music in the second city is just not as good as the music that you get in Tuliolo. It is a rendition of the Dawn Trail theme, but personally I just while I like the Dawn Trail theme, I don't like this rendition of it particularly much and it's really a shame because the second city isn't like any other city that is in 14. It's honestly something that's targeted straight at me and my interests and what I like from like an aesthetic standpoint. But those two elements sort of combine to make a city that I'm not really excited to be in that that much at endgame. And I think that is a major shame. I think that's a really big letdown. So, um, you know, I'm not thrilled about that, but who knows, maybe something will change. Next, I wanna talk about the music because the music is honestly one of the big reasons that I started playing Final Fantasy XIV and wanting to pay more attention to the MSQ in the first place. I just heard Sogan's music and really, really loved it. So what did I think about the Dawn Trail music? I think the Dawn Trail music is really, really good. One other thing that I'll, I'll say about myself real quick is that I'm very sensitive <laughs> to music. There are songs in previous expansions that I can think of where as soon as they start playing, I'll start crying just because the, the music is is moving me a lot it's doing a lot of the heavy lifting but it's also invoking some of the ideas about like what was going on when i first heard that song and, and stuff like that in terms of the main story of the game right so again i do think that the music of dawn trail is incredibly good but what i'll say is there wasn't a piece of music in this expansion that was so emotionally resonant uh, resonant for me that it moved me to tears or anything like that. There are some really strong moments in this in this expansion. I did cry towards towards the end of the expansion, but usually the music is doing a lot of the heavy lifting in those in those moments and I would say that the music was doing almost no lifting for me this time around. So maybe your experience will be a little bit different. You can let me know what you think. There are pieces I like particularly I think the uh, the song that plays at the credits is pretty bold and pretty different from anything else that I had heard in this game prior to this point. I know some people, you know, have been poking fun at it or anything like that, but I honestly think it's a great song. I really like it a lot. So yeah, all in all, I like it, but probably not something that I'm gonna like listen to when I need to be moved. Right. The zone design in this expansion, I think, is also on on par, but I think it's I think it's good. Now that I'm thinking about it, some of the environments in this expansion tell you more about the various cultures of Tuliolol than speaking to them sometimes does. Each different city that you go to feels very visually distinct from any other environment that you end up going to in the expansion, even when those two cities are exist in the same zone. So I think that was probably a strong point for me. I, I do really like that. And I guess just to briefly touch on it, I did finish my fate grind. So I've done all of the fates I need to in all of the various zones in this expansion. And I think the, the fates are, are fates. There's nothing particularly new or revolutionary or exploratory. They're exactly the same fates that you did in the last expansion. I wouldn't expect any, any new twists or anything there. So to summarize, I think the story of Dawn Trail is really good, and I am excited for the direction that it's taking us in future expansions. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I do think there were a couple of storytelling flaws, things not being foreshadowed properly. I think, you know, the writing of the individual cultures maybe could have been a little bit more interesting. And overall, I just wish that there was more gameplay and more interactivity between the, the player and the story that's going on. But, you know, if you are in a chill environment, you get yourself nice and comfy, then I think you you can enjoy the story just, just as, as well. I think, it's, I think it's really good. Personally, I think the most exciting thing for me is the dungeons because just every encounter in the game being that much more engaging, I think really 
elevates my potential to, again, just stay engaged and want to come back and do my roulettes every day. And that I think is a really positive thing. I'm, I'm really enjoying that. I think the zone design is quite good and I really, really like Tuliolol and being in Tuliolol. I think the second city is also visually inspired, but the part of town that you're going to be in for the bulk of your in-game experience, I think is, and I mean this, maybe one of the most boring environments I've been in in this game. And I think that is a major missed opportunity and I think that that really, really stinks. And while I think that the music is quite good and I think fitting for this environment, there weren't many songs that were incredibly emotionally resonant and I wonder how many of these songs I'm going to want to come back to and listen to again after we've moved past this. I'm not entirely sure. I, I'm struggling to think of a track right now other than maybe the credit song that I would want to return to. But yeah, let me know what you thought of the expansion. I personally, I'm about to go get dug in on some of the extreme trials. I haven't gotten to do any of that yet, but I'm really looking forward to that. Cool. I'll talk to you all soon, all right? Peace.